of handmade business can be tough when trying to monetize what you love. We've got truth bombs and motivation to to help you find your way through passion to profit. Let's start today, 'cause the world needs what you create. Tune in right now; it's your shot to learn. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the How to Be a Handmade Boss podcast. So today, and before we get into it, we are going to be talking about how to get your items ranked on Etsy.、Um, I kind of hate the word "get your items ranked" because it makes it seem like a system you can game, which you can't really. You can do the best you can, which is what I'm going to be going through in today's episode. But there's no way for you to like it. it it's not as if it's like a rank issue, i.e., if you are a good shop, you get ranked higher, and if you're not a good shop, you get ranked lower.、Um, it would seem like it, it is like that, but it's really not. And I'm going to be kind of explaining why that is.、Um, what I would say is, I did an episode talking all about the. Algorithm. It's like a forty odd minute one,、um, and talking all about how it works, talking all about the ins and outs and the seven ranking factors. So, what I would say is, before you listen to this, go and listen to that, and then listen to this afterwards because this is more of like a follow on,、uh, talking more about. Okay, now you know what the seven ranking factors are. These are the things that I would suggest you can actually do to influence where you are in certain people's search results. If that makes sense. Also, before we get going, as well, I would personally love it if you could leave me a cheeky little review on whatever podcast platform you are listening on. It really helps people to find the podcast. It would really help me because I read every single one of them, and obviously, this is quite a new. Thing the handmade bosses podcast is very very new,、um, so I'd love to get some feedback from you.、Um, and yeah, like I would just love to know how you're feeling about the podcast、um, and how it's helped you. And、um, also, yeah, DM me. Let me know if there's any ep- episode ideas that you want me to do, because、um, I would love to help you out by doing them. <laughs> okay, so on the episode where I talked about how the algorithm works and all that good stuff. I talked about the seven ranking factors. So, just a very quick run run through: relevance, listing quality score, recency, customer and market experience score, postage price, translations and language, and shopper habits. Those are like the top seven. Now, what I would say for you to do as well is to make sure that you go onto Etsy directly, have a little look, and just make sure that these are all still still the case, because obviously that's as of me. Recording this,、um, it hasn't changed in a long, long time, mind you. And to, to be honest with you, I don't think it will ever change dr- like drastically. But obviously, there are some things like、uh, the star seller might play into this as well. Although I really do think that is more in the customer and market experience score category, really.、Um, but just basically do a little look through, do a little glance,、um, and just make sure that these are still the seven ranking factors that are current as of when you are listening to this. So, in terms of the first one, which is relevancy, okay. So, re- relevancy is basically looking at how relevant your listing is to exactly what the buyer has typed into the search bar, okay. So, if you are looking for a heart locket necklace, you don't want to see a heart locket bracelet. You don't want to see a heart anklet. You don't want to see a silver locket necklace. You want to see exactly what you want to buy. And this is where really making sure, and I get this question a lot. You know, if you have multiple variations or colours of things that physically change the appearance of the item, then this is where having separate listings with more narrowed down, kind of later on down the search journey,、uh, keyword phrases that you are using in it. Because if you have a listing that has the keyword gold heart locket necklace. But on the listing itself, you are able to cater for rose gold heart locket necklace, silver heart locket necklace, I don't know, black heart locket 
necklace, a uh, grey heart locket necklace, green heart. You can kind of see how if someone is typing into the search bar gold heart locket necklace and the first image of your listing is a silver one, they're going to click right right past it because they're going to assume that, oh, okay, well, they, it's a heart locket necklace, but it's not quite what I'm after, right? You will definitely see, I feel, what I mean if you go and do a search for something random, like pink hair, scrunchy, um, I don't know, personalised tumbler, uh, something like that. And you'll see what I mean. You'll go through the search results and you will literally find there's a bunch of stuff that makes no freaking sense. And you're like, why? So as we know, when this happens, when you are using... And, and honestly, I... I really think this 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 whole thing really blows your mind when you think about it, and I do think it's why a lot of Etsy shop owners don't don't rank very very well uh, when it comes to things that have multiple different variations colors. We know that Etsy looks at how someone interacts with a particular listing. Okay, so therefore, if you are listing up, if if you have uh, keywords in your listing that says gold heart locket necklace and then you are having a first image that is a silver heart locket necklace right you can imagine that then people scroll past it and don't click on it they don't interact because they're thinking well yes but that's not quite what I'm after so what happens your listing then starts to get buried because people aren't interacting with it right so this is why a lot of people and I feel like I've like I might have just blown blown your minds right now but this is why I always say list things separately don't assume that people are gonna know you know because the titles get cut cut off especially on the Etsy app if you've got like gold heart locket necklace silver heart or silver heart locket necklace that is probably going to be cut off because there's no room for the long title to be shown, right? So this is why I always say to people, list things out separately because you are more than likely going to get someone who's looking for that exact thing. Now, also under the whole relevancy umbrella is I would avoid, if you can, using words to describe the thing that is not in the photo, Okay, because again, you know, if someone is searching for a silver heart locket necklace and your first photo is a gold one, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, it's nice. But again, it's not the right color. It's not the right, you know, whatever. Now, this is very, you know, you don't have to be like 18 inch gold heart locket necklace, 20 inch gold heart locket, you know, like people aren't dumb. They do know that maybe if they click on what what they're after, then there may be different, like, I don't know, sleeve lengths or uh, dress lengths, skirt lengths, shoe sizes, wallet sizes, <laughs> uh, chain lengths. Like people know that that is a thing. However, if it's actually changing the physical appearance of the entire item, then I would say to list those things out separate separately as well. Um, so yeah, that is one thing that I would say is keep it relevant. And this is also to attribute some things as well. Um, don't describe something as a Christmas gift unless it is really catered to being a, you guessed it, Christmas gift. Because otherwise what happens is then people are like looking at the categories of things and then they are like, oh, okay, um, this isn't really what I'm after um, and it just never gets shown, you know? Um, And the same with, you know, when you are having something that could be a birthday gift, an anniversary gift, I think being, I think kind of zooming out and, and being a little less specific is a good thing because what you don't want is someone to you know, narrow things down so much that you get excluded. Okay. So being relevant to what the buyer is looking for, that's really important to also know how your target market searches for things. Because if you are using jargon, if you are using words that your target market doesn't know, and I see this so, so much, and I see it a lot because let's say, for example, you make pottery and there's a specific um, pottery process. Let's say your uh, vase has a lot of like dots on, dots on it. You might call it hammered. You might call it 
spotted clay. You might call it something else, but your target market might just call it a dotty vase or a knobbly vase or something like that, right? So you've got to really use words and phrases that are relevant again, keyword, that are relevant to how your target audience actually searches. So the very next thing is listing quality score. So we've talked about relevancy. We've talked about exactly what you can do to influence that particular ranking factor. The second thing is listing quality score. Okay. So Etsy, at the end of the day, they want people to find items they actually want to purchase because when you make money, Etsy makes money. So what Etsy will do is that they will look at clues as to what items you might like based on historically how your listing has performed. So you can already see how it's all kind of linking together um, in terms of, okay, there is relevancy that if what you're putting in, your titles, tags, descriptions, attributes, uh, all that kind of thing, if what you're putting in there is relevant to what the person is searching for, your item is going to get clicks which and, and views and favourites and all those types of things and buys, <laughs> which is what we want. Then that contributes to your overall listing quality score. So this isn't just how well your listing performs. It's a massive chunk of it, but it's not all because it could be things as well like geographical location. So what you will see now is when you do a search and I always say, go and do a search for something random um, and you'll see exactly what I mean, where you will see shops that are more local to you, higher in the search results because they think that people who are more local to you, shops that are more local, biz- businesses that are more local, they it will get to you quicker and therefore you'll have a better experience with it rather than a shop that might be located in the States or India or somewhere like that where it might take a lot longer, okay? So you will see now that it says like local shop near to you, something like that. And it will basically push those shops higher, right? It will also depend on things that you've clicked on or bought before as well. And this is also why as well that when you go on vacation mode, hol- holiday mode, because of no one, you know, you've taken a break, you've you've effectively taken the listings down, people cannot interact with them. Therefore, Etsy can't effectively see how people are interacting with your listings, with your shop, right? So what can you do to influence your listing quality score? Well, you can make sure that your items are relevant to the people who are looking for them to begin with. So again, going back and kind of like listening to what I'm saying about making sure that your titles, your tags, your attributes are all linking back to the item that is actually being shown and the item that they are going to get, right? Um, Also making sure that everything is super, super clear. And I, I do also feel as well that making sure that straight off the bat, you are putting your best foot forward when it comes to your listing. Just making sure that when you are ready to publish it, that everything is looking as good as you can make it, okay? Um, because again, this is quite a time thing and you know you want to make sure that everything is right straight off the bat. So when it comes to new listings, there is something that then comes into play that is called recency. And if you're sat there saying like, how are my new listings going to get any boost? Because obviously that doesn't have any history with listing quality score wise. So how does it even work? Well, that is when recency comes in and basically new listings get a very small boost. Just so it's given the same chance to see how it is interacted with, how people like it. Um, and it. And it's just basically giving it that same fair test, really, to make sure that it is what people want. So when you put a new listing, and it doesn't matter if it's a copy, a new listing, whatever, when you put a new listing on Etsy, it will get a nice kind of neutral boost. It's not amazing. It's not like page one of everyone's screens. And it might not even be page two, but it's just a small boost that then sees, okay, how are people 
playing around with this? Are they liking it? Are they giving it a favour? Are they buying it? Um, Are they spending a lot of time on it? All of those things are good. It will then start to kind of creep up and up and up. If those things are bad, it will then go down and down and down. Okay, so recency is basically where you will get a small boost. Now, it's not really a lot you can do with individual listings with that. But what you can do is something where you will drip feed new listings every single week. And I talked a little bit more about this in my episode that I did uh, talking about how to resurrect a dead shop. Um, and I talked a lot more about about that. So I'd probably say go and listen to that one as well. Um, but drip feeding listings means that you always have a steady stream of newness coming in. Okay. So let's talk about your customer and marketplace experience score. Okay. So like I said in the episode where I did like a very quick run through of the algorithm, I didn't say quick. I mean, it wasn't quick, but it was a more in-depth one than perhaps YouTube would have allowed, allowed me to. Etsy really wants people to have a good experience of the platform. So it makes sense to them to only really push sellers that are doing that for them, which means, you know, if you have a shop that has a lot of cases, people saying things aren't coming on time, bad reviews, it doesn't make any any sense for Etsy to start putting that uh, those shop listings at the top of search results, okay? This is not a score that you can see on your dashboard. This is not, I mean, most of this stuff, really, most of the ranking factors are not things that you can see, are not things that, you know, is a literal score, not like the star seller where you can actually see what that score is. This is more things that are going on behind the scenes, okay? So Etsy is always watching, okay? It's always there. That score is always kind of ticking along but great reviews completed about section shop policies preferably using their templates um, are all the things that Etsy has said helps and you don't really want recent cases copyright strikes or intellectual property notices those are all things that don't really help but all the kind of average shop things are how you can influence this is really try to push getting reviews. Uh, I might do a whole episode talking about reviews and how to get them and all that sort of thing. But really making sure that as many people leave reviews that have bought from you, leave reviews on your shop as humanly possible. Okay. Um, So also there are some more things that you can do that will influence this. Things like responding quickly to messages, accurately representing your items, exceeding customer expectations. So this can be very much um, under promising, over delivering, uh, dispatching orders on time, uh, asking for reviews. And like I said, really getting people to leave them, uh, filling out your about section fully and filling out your shop policies are all things that you can do to help influence that factor and ultimately help you rank higher. Postage price. So really, this is pretty self-explanatory. And again, if you listen to the episode of me talking about how the algorithm works, you will know that if you have free postage, uh, you will get a small little boost. Now, this is something that I have really seen come into play over the past year. And if you do a search now, you will see that a lot of the listings on page one, depending on what you're searching for, of course, will have items with free postage because Etsy knows that a big, big, big kind of wall between the customer buying and where they are now is postage costs and any hidden costs that get thrown at you at the checkout process. Okay. So, Items with free postage obviously are shown to therefore convert better, which then eventually helps your listing quality score, right? So, what I would say, and this is my general advice, obviously there are going to be people who are like, I can't really do that for whatever reason. But my general advice is if your if your postage cost is under £10, put it in the item cost and put free postage in there. So you're not losing out on any kind of uh, postage. 
you are just literally saying, okay, I'm going to put it in the item cost and put it as free postage. Also, the other great thing about this as well is that you get like a nice little green badge underneath your listing. And what happens here, like psychologically, is that when people are scrolling through the search results, especially if you're in a saturated niche as well, they might be met with three, four, five, ten, twenty different options for them to buy. If they are scrolling through and they might be rushed, that they might be in a bit of a hurry, they might just want to get this 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 job ticked off their list by Auntie June's birthday gift, whatever. They know that the price they're being displayed on the search results is the price they're going to actually pay. So this, again, really helps you with listings, getting clicks and all, all, all those types of things. Now, if you sell big and bulky items, you know, you don't have to do free postage because obviously people don't expect you to ship a a four piece dresser set for free. (laughs) Um, And also as well, this doesn't include um, expedited or anything like that. Maybe just free standard, something really, you know, chill. Um, But I would definitely say to you, if it's under £10 or $12, maybe put it in the item cost and put it as free. The next one is language and translation. So this is pretty much something that I think is very unique to a very specific skill set with a very specific type of group of people, aka those that can speak two languages, three, four, which by the way, absolutely blows my mind because I tried to learn a language once and I just couldn't do it. My brain was like, "Eh, denied. Um, (laughs) I have enough stuff in my brain, like no, no more. Um, And yeah, it is really something that unless you can speak another language, you can kind of correct, for want of a better word, Etsy's auto translations, then don't worry about it. It's not really something that you're going to get penalized for if you don't speak another another language. It just gives you a little boost if you can. So the next thing is shopper habits, okay? And this really is something that you can't really help. It's really all to do with an AI bit of kit that's basically looking at, okay, what do you like looking at today? Therefore, I'm going to serve up more of that to you tomorrow. So it's kind of like if you've ever clicked on, I mean, me and my other half have been looking for a new bed for about two months. Um, and we have been looking on like Dreams, the bed shop, just lots of different bed shops. And all of a sudden, my Facebook feed, my Google ad bits, uh, blogs, everything is all to do with finding a bed, finding a mattress. And, and that is is basically what Etsy also does as well on their own platform, of course. But it's basically called Context Specific Ranking or CSR. And it's really just looking at what have they shown interest on? What have they clicked on? Uh, what have they hovered over? What stopped their scroll? So we can serve up more of that. And again, it's not really something you can do apart from making your listing engaging. Um, I would also say putting a listing video would will really help with this as well, because people will stop and watch it. Um, but it's not really anything that you can essentially do. Okay. But talking about other things that you can do, I would say one of the biggest pieces of advice is that don't stress about something that you cannot control. Do your best with all of this stuff. Don't obsess and really kind of go, oh, I need to tick all like seven or six off. Just do the best you can. Also, it's why I say don't have auto renew on your listings because if you're just auto renewing over and over and over again something might not be hitting the mark with those particular listings and if you're just letting it auto renew how are you going to know to go back in and sort it out so this is where having your listings to actually expire and for you manually renewing them means that you get a nice little list um, of all of the all of the listings that you need to go back in and do a little something something with okay SEO as a, as a whole, and, and not even SEO really, but ranking on Etsy or 
any website for that matter because they all have some kind of algorithmic search process with certain things that are not too dissimilar from Etsy, certain things that you have to hit. Even if you have your own website, Google is still the kind of main player here. Google needs to know that your website is trustworthy. Google needs to know that your website is engaging. Google needs to know that your website has uh, things that are relevant to what the person is actually searching for. It's really all the same thing. And it's, to be honest, how the internet as a whole works. But it is an ongoing process. It is not something that you're going to do once and then it's always going to be there and it's always going to be working for you at the exact same level. And this is why I do feel that a lot of Etsy shop owners over the last two or three years who have seen a big dip are seeing a big dip because they're doing the things that they think that they've always had to had to do rather than doing a bit of a pivot a bit of a testing and kind of reassessing things right it's always a process round and round and round so it's like listing testing tracking things and doing a pivot and assessing things if you need to list test track assess and pivot and it's a, and it's like a an, an ongoing cycle, right? And this is not just for listings either. This is for your shop, for your social media posts, for your website, for everything, right? So really, it is again, it's not something that you can kind of set, forget, get on with it. I mean, it will do for like maybe six months, a year, but there is gonna have some it's gonna need some level of you going in there and having a, a little look at things. So I really hope that that has helped you to understand how you rank higher, okay? Now, certainly when it comes to things like your your quality score, uh, relevancy, all those kinds of things, you would have heard me mention conversion rate a lot, okay? And conversion rate is something that it's really important to know. And it's really important to get that score up because if your conversion rate gets higher, therefore your listings are going to be shown higher, right? It makes perfect sense. Etsy wants to show you things that you're more likely to buy. So I actually have a really amazing training for you. Um, It is literally called how to get more Etsy sales within seven days. And I go so in depth of the whole conversion rate thing and how to make that higher. And I also talk about the algorithm a little bit more and how you can drive your own traffic. It's a really good all-rounder training. It's about 90 minutes long. And it's probably going to be the best 90 minutes that you've ever spent within your business. So I would definitely say to go and watch that. It's recently been updated as well. So if you want the new version, if you watched it like a year ago or so, go and watch it again. <laughs> it's, it's always all been jiffied around and it's just it's just great. Um, so that will be in the show notes. It's handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion. But again, it will be in the show notes. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning into How to Be a Handmade Boss. And if you're eager to boost your Etsy sales within just seven days, then be sure to join my most popular free training at handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion. You can also find the link in the show notes as well. Keep an eye out for our next episode where we'll be continuing our journey towards handmade business success together. And until then, keep crafting and stay inspired because the world really does need those special creations that only you can make.